this particular generator uh, has uh, an issue peculiar to the carburetor. If you put on the fuel tab and kickstart the generator, okay. If you put on the fuel tab and kickstart the generator, you would observe. You would observe that the carburetor leaks petrol mm -hmm. and what happened now is this it overflows okay a lot of reasons could a lot of thoughts you get me could be associated with why the carburetor overflows we just can't tell at the moment but what we are going to do is we are going to fix this carburetor and stop it from overflowing it's so much so just imagine you get four liters of fuel and put it in your generator in the next three five minutes everything is out and as a matter of fact the generator itself will not run or even if it decides to come on it will fluctuate fluctuate and go off on itself so we'll be looking at how to fix the carburetor this fixing carburetor would be a very very long tutorial or will i say course <laughs> Uh, let me say it's going to be a very very long course so you have to pay attention to details and be rest assured at the end of this particular video you should be able to fix the carburetor of your generator especially for this kind of two stroke generator so let's quickly lose out the tank and head down to the carburetor okay guys here we are we've taken out the tank and the carburetor is now visible next thing we need to do now is to quickly lose this out and take off the carburetor Okay, here we go. We have the carburetor with us here. The carburetor looks neat, but unfortunately, its neatness could not help it to work well. So, let me vividly explain one of the things that could make a carburetor overflow. And one of the things that could make a carburetor overflow is when you have dirt in your carburetor. Your carburetor will overflow when you have dirt in your carburetor. And one of the reasons that can hurt your carburetor is when your tank is dirty. So by the time we are done fixing this, we'll check the tank to see if the tank is dirty. Another reason your carburetor can overflow is when the um, chamber, the foil chamber in your carburetor has some issues. It's faulty. We will look at that all and we'll see how to rectify it. So basically what we'll be doing to this particular carburetor is we'll be servicing the carburetor and seeing how we can make it stop overflow so we'll be serving the carburetor to remove the dirt so there's dirt in the carburetor if you look here carefully there is dirt there's a little dirt in the carburetor okay and it up wow look at this guys look at it guys it appears the chamber is equally faulty this is not how this place is supposed to work. So what we'll do next is we'll service the carburetor, we'll open all the pores of the carburetor, then we'll fix this chamber. Immediately after doing that, I believe the generator would work perfectly. First off, while servicing the carburetor, I prefer taking out everything so that it gives me ample space to work. Initially, I take out this chamber, then I take out this pin, and this the up next i take out this screw if you have watched our videos on how to adjust the fuel consumption of a generator you should be well aware of this by now 
So I'll take out all this, then wash the carburetor thoroughly. So because the carburetor won't just on its wow, this is pretty tight. Although I finally lose it now. This is the foil jet. It's called the foil jet. Okay. So this is the bare carburetor with nothing attached to it. And this is where the real work comes into play now. The carburetor, you remember, is calibrated in such a way to allow petrol enters your engine. So while the carburetor is calibrated, it has a lot of pores that aids in that calibration. Just imagine there's a pore here, or let me call it a hole, there's a hole here, there's another inside, there is one here, there is one here. There are a lot of pores that aids in the working engineering of these carburetors. You must make sure all the pores are okay. As someone who wants to fix a carburetor, one thing you should take cognizance of is the first thing I need to do is to check if all the pores of my carburetor are open. It's not advisable for any pore of your carburetor to be closed. By closed, I mean clogged. Probably clogged with dirt or clogged with bad fuel, as the case may be. To be rest assured that if you open all the pores of your carburetor, you are halfway through fixing your carburetor. Okay? Hope that is understood. So what you need to do now is to simply follow me and see how I open all the pores of this carburetor as that is our first step to rectifying or to fixing this carburetor. For fixing a generator carburetor, this is what I use often and I'm going to share my secret with you guys. This is what I use often. I use this simple screwdriver, this simple clutch cable. This is a clutch cable actually. A clutch cable is usually covered with a black skin, right? But I had to peel off the skin so I have access to these tiny, tiny wires. It is necessary to have tiny wires like this or tiny needles, whichever one you can find, because those are the only materials that could penetrate a very tiny pore of your carburetor. Is that understood? I believe it's understood. So I use this, I use this, and I get my fuel container. So I usually do not use the carburetor cleaner. So let's quickly see how to fix the pores of this generator. First thing I do is to just quickly wash out, wash everything with foil. Just try to insert into all the pores, into all the pores. These are the many pores that I would like to, I usually like to call it, especially when explaining to uh, my students. These are the pores. Make sure you put foil in all the pores. The next thing you get your um, clutch cable or clutch wire and simply look for, we'll start with the top pause, okay? We'll start with the top pause and quickly clean everything properly. While you are doing this guys, please make sure you don't break these wires inside your carburetor okay so make sure the wire is very strong when you are using it so that it doesn't break inside your carburetor Okay, you notice carefully just now, this wire came out from the other end, that is to tell you this carburetor has been through. Check out this wire coming out from this other end. I hope you did that carefully. So basically this is what we'll be doing to all the ports. There are some you will see, there are some you can't see because the camera may not be able to assess that angle, but just know that that is how it works. Okay.
While you chew them, while you chew the pods, you try to blow in fuel, you try to pump in fuel. Because it's one thing to get access to the dead or the clogged fuel in the um, carburetor, it's another thing to use fuel to push them out. Okay, so you quickly push them out. Okay, there are other smaller pores here by the side you will quickly open them as well then necessary like this one it has dirty but the dead just came out a lot of pores here you open them they very very necessary with well, this now after doing this the first step this is the first phase after doing this first phase you we see how your carburetor will work so so well these are very little little things that fixes your carburetor as a matter of fact if your carburetor has issues and you do this consistently you may not even need to buy a carburetor in the next five years i assure you that okay up next we blow Okay, alright guys, so far, if you see this carburetor, we've almost turned it to a brand new one, right? We've watched it and almost turned it to a very brand new one. You see how sharp it looks. But that's not all. We keep this up next. We, we work on these jets. Okay, we work on these jets. This is one of the most... This is one of the keyest components of, of this um, carburetor. One of the most key components. You quickly insert, you quickly insert this wire into this. It goes in, and if possible, if there's any dead, it pulls it out. And then this goes in as well. Just clean out. Just open the pores and clean it well. So, if you've watched this video to this very point, you would notice that cleaning a carburetor is not too difficult. All you need to do is to take out, take the um, carburetor and just open all the pores available to the carburetor. Okay, now we'll fix that jet back. And now we are we're trying to fix. The generator back so we can couple it. We quickly take this back, okay? Take this back after washing. Remember what I talked about the adjustment of the carburetor, okay? In our last, in I think in our videos about a month ago or there, but you can go check it out. You take it to the end and then you take back for like three times, okay? So that is it with that. Now, uh, another thing you do is to quickly tighten this back. This is responsible for the speed of your generator. It is connected to your governor. So for no reason should you forget to fix this. Do not forget to fix this at all. Now, remember I said something. 
Remember I said something earlier while talking about how to fix this carburetor. I said some of the things that could make a carburetor have issues like overflowing and maybe fluctuation is because the carburetor is dirty, the pores are clogged. Another thing I said, I said another thing that could make the carburetor overflow is when this fuel chamber is bad. This carburetor chamber is bad. And looking at this alone, if you are a real technician, you will observe that this carburetor chamber is bad. Why do I say it's bad? Look carefully at this. This is supposed to be tilted in accordance with this. Um, with this, it's supposed to be in accordance. Regularly, it's supposed to be in accordance. Although later on, for technicians or for technician, they do tweak it. But when they do tweak it, it's not always like this. There's a way they tweak it. But I will show you guys everything about the tweaking now. Okay, guys, let's quickly connect it back. So we fix our, our carburetor if you look at this chamber it's deceitful because you wouldn't know the top and the bottom but one thing i would advise you to do when losing your carburetor is take cognizance of that take cognizance of the top and the bottom if you take it all that the other way like this i guarantee your jet is not going to work it's just going to pour out for it so be mindful of how you lose it and take cognizance of it. All right, we simply insert this in the pin in, and then we we'll take it down. Okay, it has properly fitted in. Up next, we insert. Good, we we'll fully inserted it, and what do we have now? We have a carburetor. The only thing left to do now is to couple this. All right, and they have tight this, but we won't do that. Why won't we do that? We have to test to see if we properly fixed our carburetor very well. And how do you do that? It's called the fuel test. I call it the fuel test. I don't know what other people call it anyway. What you do, you insert fuel inside, and of course, this is how your carburetor works. When fuel pass through the fuel hose, it goes down to this end and pour out foil which originally should go into this chamber which originally should go into this cup right and this is where the work of the chamber comes into play when foil goes in and it gets to a point where this chamber is fully filled this foil in this chamber this foil in this cup rather pushes the chamber upwards and then it stops the chamber from allowing more foil into the cup okay but when your carburetor is bad even when this chamber is fully filled okay this allows fuel to go into your cup which is not supposed to be so but now fuel goes in and then we assume the fuel now has filled this chamber this cup rather it has filled this cup and that fuel now pushes this floating chamber upwards to stop this chamber from to stop this carburetor from collecting more fuel from the tank and it only collects fuel now when this chamber, when this cup's petrol, when this petrol in this fuel is exhausted by going into the engine. Is that understood? It's not technical at all. It's just a normal principle of life where this a cup only collects after it has released uh, its content. That is exactly what happened here. So we successfully seen that this floating chamber works in accordance to th that principle. And then it works perfectly. Now I remove my hand, fuel comes out. When I take it up a little, in assumption that a fuel has filled this cup and that fuel has pushed this chamber upwards, you will notice that fuel does not flow through. So we'll successfully fix this carburetor. All right. Another thing we should take cognizance of while coupling is this gasket, this rubber gasket, as it is called. It is a rubber gasket just make sure the rubber gasket is well fitted if it's not well fitted one or two things one of the many things that could happen is this when you fix this cup fuel can come out from this out from the outside of this cup and of course you will feel it's the carburetor that is very faulty and it's the carburetor that allows for fuel you know perhaps you will feel the chamber is bad and that's why 
poor pores out from your carburetor. Instead, you wouldn't know it's because of that little gasket you didn't fix appropriately. Is the reason your carburetor isn't working fine. So, guys, we've washed this carburetor. We've learned how to wash the carburetor, how to open all the pores, and of course, we've learned how to um, fix the chamber. Okay, let me quickly tighten this drain plug. I'm not sure I explained this earlier, but this drain plug is responsible for draining out the fuel in your carburetor. There are sometimes your carburetor may overflow, and one of the first things to do is to quickly drain out the fuel in your carburetor. When you drain out the fuel in your carburetor through this drain plug, and the carburetor um, or yes, the fuel still overflowing doesn't stop, then you know you have to undergo the entire process I have explained in this carburetor. So I will quickly tighten this back because if you don't tighten it back, fuel can still leak out from this place. Next thing we do is to copy, couple the carburetor in the generator and kickstart the generator to see if everything we have done has worked out perfectly. Not forgetting that before now, when we kickstart the generator, it doesn't work. It just come on and go off it on its own because the carburetor overflows. Okay, this is a very very old generator. Honestly, if you look at it very well. You know it's a very very old generator but we are not minding that we still need to fix it to the best of standard guys okay. up next is to couple the tank but before i couple the tank i will quickly wash the tank because i have previously confirm that this tank is dirty remember i said in the earlier part of this video that when your tank is dirty it could also transfer death to your carburetor which in turn make your carburetor to overflow or make your carburetor to float with your engine remember i said that right so what we do now is to quickly wash the tank this is how i'm going to wash the tank the tank washing will not be part of this video so it doesn't appear so long i will take off this filter i will take off this filter from the tank I will lose this foil tap. I will lose this foil tap, and then I will shake and pour the content in a fresh container. Which, after doing, I can sieve the foil and pour it back into the tank, or better still, get another foil. So let me go quickly do that. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I have simply turned out the bad foil in this tank and we filled it with a better foil. Up next, we quickly couple and then we kick start. This time around, we allow foil to go in. While we are allowing foil to go in, we quickly couple back this, those compartments we lose that initially. Okay guys, I believe enough fuel should have gone in, so I will quickly kickstart the generator and see how it works. guys we have successfully serviced our carburetor right this is one of the most technical parts of fixing a generator actually i kid you not fixing a carburetor is one of the most technical parts of um fixing a generator one more thing i need to draw your attention to is as regards the floating chamber sometimes when you tweak the floating chamber probably for the first time and maybe you decide to put it on after putting it on you may still observe it leaks a little what that tells you is you just have to tweak it further you have to push it in a little further so that's it from us from this particular class guys if you love that video which i definitely know 
you've loved for watching up to this particular point please do well to subscribe to this channel so when other videos are posted you are among the first to see them also do well to share this video also do well to share this video to friends and family so that they can also share in this goodness on this channel please do not forget to support us it's highly necessary so your support motivates us to do more more videos all right we'll meet in our next class it's goodbye take care